How's it going everybody? In this video we're going to take a look at our next feature capability with when it comes to BGP auto discovery and LDP signaling and that's going to be playing around with the route target values. So we can do, instead of doing a full mesh where every PE router that's running BGP AD can uh, send and receive traffic from all the other PEs as well, we're going to switch this up to more of a hub and spoke design. So this would be where you would configure the export and import route target values the same way you would in uh, layer 3 VPN to do hub and spoke, where you would say on a particular node where you would import specific values, but you wouldn't, um, you would export yours, but you would only import certain values. So the concept is very, very simple. So let's go ahead and whiteboard this out just for, for a moment. So let's talk about how exactly how this would work. So in the event that we were to um, have a setup where we had, let's say, we had CSR1, we have CSR3, CSR5, and then uh, CSR7, right? Well, right now we have basically full connectivity. So if I was to draw, oops, if I was to draw a land segment between these guys like this, we basically have a full mesh of connections, right? No, there's no one who's gonna really argue with this. This is a full mesh. Now, if we were to change this up, and let's say we use the value of, the uh, route target value of the first value being the autonomous system number, and then we did another value where we focused on the, the device number. So one colon one, and then we did one, uh, one colon, one colon three, and then we did a one colon five, and then a one colon seven. So if this guy right here was supposed to be a root, and this guy right here is supposed to be a root, but this guy here and uh, this guy right here and this guy right here are supposed to be leaves. The way this would work is we would export this value here, we would export this value here, we would export this value here, and we would export value this value here. That means that all of the routers are going to export their local route target value. So that means it's going to push it from, uh, it's going to push it out into BGP as an update. Well, remember there is no VRF here, so we don't have to go underneath the VRF and do the export values. We go underneath BGP AD for the, at the VPLS level, uh, or the layer two VPN, uh, the VFI level. That's where we're doing the import and export, and you'll, we'll see this here in just a minute when I go do it. So then what we would do is in an import. The import we would say, in this case here, we do a a one colon uh, three five and seven. Over here we would do an import of a one colon one three and five. Over here, we're, the least we only want to import what's coming from the uh, from the the root. So we would do an import. We would do a one colon one and a seven, and here would be an import of a one and then a, um, a one and a seven. So we would, the way that it would work is you'd have CSR one, let's actually just draw it this way. Communication between three and five would not work, right? This would be a big red line, but communication between CSR one and CSR three, this would work. CSR1 and CSR7, this would work. And then uh, CSR1 and 5, this would work. And then we would have communication with, let's draw a little straighter of a line, this would work. CSR7 to CSR5. And we're making these modifications based off of the route target values. This makes it easier to work with long term, and it, you can do this on a per VPLS basis. So we could have a full mesh on one router, right? So we were actually gonna go set up a whole new uh, L2 VFI. We're gonna use 1001 and, um, or we could use 1010. We'll, we'll let's do that just so that we're not running into any issues with the 1002, three, four, and five. So we'll start off with 1010 and then we'll go in here and we will make the modifications as we need to. We'll set the, R, the RT value, we'll export and import what we need to do and we'll do the E-tree design. 
So it'll make it very easy to work with long term. But the end game is R3 and R4 will not be able to ping each other. They won't be able to do anything with each other. And that's where this logic comes into play. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how this is going to work out. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, let me clear this portion of the screen. I will uh, actually pause for the moment and clear the screen off. I'll clean, clear this off down here at the bottom. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this started. So the logic is pretty easy here. So we'll start on CSR1. And you'll notice under show run section L2 VPN that we have this BGP auto discovery up here. Why is it not showing up? Show run interface gig three. Oh, that's because I did it the other way. Um, okay, so show run section L2. All right, underneath this one. We'll go underneath this guy here and we're gonna grab this and then we will specify the route target value. So this is where you would have to specify the config for the route target. So um, by default, if we were to um, come in here and take a look at this and do, sh let's actually jump out of global config and show BGP L, uh, L2 VPN VPLS all, we're gonna see that one in 1000. So the autonomous system number and then the VPN ID are being used as the raw target value. And as you can see, it's a full mesh. We're sending and receiving information from everybody. So if we were to change this up and do a Go ahead and grab that line and config again. Let's do L2 VFI BGP AD dis auto discovery. And we're gonna do the, uh, we'll do a route to target and we'll say export. I'll use one colon uh, one. That'll be the export value here. But then I'll import one and then I'll import three, five, or I'm uh, sorry, uh, five, Go ahead and, and then seven. Let me go ahead and pull out four. So do show run section L2. Now, if you see here, I've got the export rule set up the way that I need to. But what's interesting about this is I'm go actually going to lose connectivity. So if we were to go back to here and do a, um, you're going to see that all those values are actually going to get removed because we're not matching on any of the values coming in. So give that a second to do its updates. If we do this, we eventually, those routes will do, go away because we're not actually importing any of those. So we're not importing any of those values. So, so if I was to come in and do a clear VGP L2 VPN VPLS and star, right? What's gonna end up happening is we should lose all of our connections, everybody else. And if we come in here and do a, right, so that doesn't mean what our BGB updates won't come through, but we should lose connectivity. Uh, okay, so we're learning this stuff in Show run all section L2. I'm just curious, VFI. I'm just wondering if auto route target. Okay, so this this command is still there. So I've actually got to I got to remove that command. So don't forget to do that. And no auto route target. All right. So that should remove, delete the AD peering. So we should lose all of our connections. So the pseudo wires are going down hard. And I want you guys to see this because in the event that you're, okay, exactly. This is what I was waiting for. So it says right here, uh, extended uh, denied due to extended community not supported. So that means that when you turn auto route target off, that means that whatever route target values you had defined need to be explicitly permitted in order for all this to work. So this is again, hub and spoke 
is uh, more it's uh, more of an administrative burden on the engineer or operations team to keep this updated. But as you can see that by turning auto target auto auto route target off, then you throw away the capability of being able to bring all those routes in. So so now that we know that, we're gonna go to let's do let's do our show BGP all and we're not learning anything because nothing else is being allowed to come in. Now on CSR3, this changes a little bit. So we come in and do a show run section L2 VPN. We're gonna look in here and we can see uh, it doesn't say auto route target all, right? So we're gonna do, do a show run all and hit the enter key again. And then you'll see that underneath L2 VPN BGP, that auto route target is enabled. So we're gonna have to come up here to this guy, go to global config, right click and type in no, pull that out. So we're gonna type in the uh, route target export will be one colon three. And we're gonna do an import of one colon one and one colon seven, because those are our roots, right? One and seven are the roots. We're not concerned about any of the other stuff. So let me go ahead and do this, no auto rot target. And do show run section L2 VPN. All right, good, we're, we've got that squared away now and we're in good shape. No route, auto route target, so auto route target's been turned off. So we go ahead and exit out of here and we can see that by changing that config that the um, CSR1 will start to learn stuff back in and that is what we want to have happen. Now we're gonna do the same thing with five and do show run section L2 VPN and we're gonna come back underneath this guy here and we'll do underneath LDP signaling is where this config actually goes. So if you're paying attention to it, you have to go underneath the auto discovery command in order for this to work. So we're gonna go to here and we're gonna type in route target export is gonna be one colon five and the route target import will be uh, one colon one and one colon seven. We're gonna go ahead and exit out of the auto discovery so that we can get the kickoff to, to come into play. And then on seven, we'll do the exact same thing. Actually, I need to go back to five and type in, here type in, uh, no auto route target. And then go to seven and do the same thing. Do show run section L2 VPN, come underneath here. And we're gonna type in route target export of one colon seven. Route target import, one colon one, one colon three, and one colon five. And then no auto route target. And then we should have connectivity, connectivity with everybody. So all that's working out well. So we're gonna go to line console zero, logging synchronous and we'll go in and show VPLS, and now we have connectivity one, three, five, and seven, or sorry, I should say three, five, and seven, which is good. We have connectivity with all of this stuff, but if we go down to three, and we do a show BGP L2 VPN VPLS all, we only get stuff from three and seven, but we don't get anything from five. And then if we, or to go to router one, or let's go check out router five real quick. Let's uh, show L2 VPN, or sorry, show BGP L2 VPN VPLS all. We're gonna get stuff from five and seven, or locally, and, and from one, but not from router three. And then seven will be the same thing. So we should see, oops. So we, we associated that. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and do a ping to 10.100.3. And .7, I'm sorry. 
seven. All of that should work. I'm sorry, that's uh, control shift six. I should be able to talk to, this should be a four, and then this should be a five. There we go. So CSR seven, if we do show BGP, L2, VPN, BPLS all, we're gonna get stuff from three, five, or one, three, and five, which is what we expect to see. Now if we go to router three, and or, I'm sorry, router three over here, and I come in here and do a ping to 10.100.100.1, no problem, and seven should be no problem. I'm sorry, five should be no problem. Beautiful, so those are, at, those are working, but if I go to four here, this should not work, and it's not because we're not imp we're not doing any uh, importing or exporting of the values in order for this to work. So we are exporting the route target values from the PE routers outbound underneath the v uh, underneath the VFI, but we are not importing um, on three. We're not importing CSR five, and on five, CSR five we're not importing CSR three for that particular design. So it makes it pretty easy to, to see exactly how that works. So as you can see, not very difficult to understand the logic behind that. You just have to understand route target importation. And the nice thing about it is we're not having to do any redistribution from uh, a BGP into an IGP for a VRF because, well, we're not dealing with layer three. This is how you control layer two propagation of the BGP updates. You have to go underneath the VFI in order to do that. Pretty straightforward stuff, as you can tell. So let's just recap, take a look at the config real quick so everybody's on the same page. If we do a show run section L2, you can see underneath the, the BGP auto discovery that we are importing three, five, and seven. We're exporting ourselves, and everything looks pretty good. So there's that. So that, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you in this video. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.